Roll it, roll it up, roll it up, let it shock. Roll it up, roll it up, let's it up, roll 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 it up, like you said, you at first you were starting in auto, mm-hmm. and then you started moving, you know, into manual and learning the camera and everything. How did you, uh, or when did you kind of see that you had that eye for photography? Because I mean, it's not an easy thing to right to to see angles and and to see different you know things. Right. And, um. Honestly, random classes like so. I took I took a class in high school. It was for photo journalism, and I okay. feel like um that helped me like kind of like get the fundamentals like the rule of thirds and like little angles and this and that and then um it's like the basics that carry over to a lot right of right stuff. that you don't even realize like as you're like now like i'm doing stuff and i'm like oh shit like, like this is probably some shit that i really learned when i was like 17 and, like just yeah didn't, you know what i'm saying um but um i don't know like i just feel like also watching like I watched a lot of America's Next Top Model. Okay. <laughs> so, like, it's also, like, for me, like, photography, like, is less about, like, technical shit and more about the vibe. Like, yeah. I just want whoever I'm taking photos of, whether it's, like, a, like, little bougie family from the woodlands or whether it's a bad, a bad bitch who works at a strip club. Like, I don't care who it is. Like, I want music playing, music of your choice. Like, whatever makes you feel comfortable yeah. and makes you, like, able to just really shine through these, like, pictures. That's uh that's important. Yeah, you know, a vibe can definitely throw everything off. Right, because I like they're like I've had times where I'm like taking like family portraits of people like at a park, and it just feels so awkward. It does. Yeah. And because like first of all, like I don't know you, and I I gotta tell you what to do. Sometimes if I'm taking photos of like the whole family, there's like maybe like a teenager who doesn't want to be there. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, can you? maybe pretend you know what i'm saying i'm like uh can you smile a little bit and then like i get like a really awkward smile so i'm like okay like this is not gonna work so then like i'll i'll play music it lightens the mood it's like not just fucking quiet as fuck you know what i'm saying silence will will ruin some stuff. right right normally what i like to do is like just make them kind of like poke fun at each other or like pretend to laugh so much that you actually feel stupid so then you actually start to laugh you know what i'm saying and like then it like lightens the mood and then i get like good shots off that yeah whenever you're whenever people are laughing sometimes you get some of the best shots i mean whenever you think about it you're like that would that's dumb right but whenever you're laughing you give that like kind of natural right. smile it's like organic and- um but like if it's like a bad bitch like if it's like not like a family i'm really like i want to hear some real like ratchet some real hood shit or really like whatever like they want to play but also like i'm very quick to like hype somebody up like i'm very like behind the camera like yes bitch like like i'm just very like you know if it's like if the angle's not right i'm like all right like let's turn a little bit this way you know more ass poke the ass out a little bit more like very that having people feel comfortable during a photo shoot like that especially whenever you're doing like a model or something and and hyping them up that goes right. that man that helps right absolutely because if and you, also mirrors help too like having them having them be able to see themselves like that helps a lot because if you're if they feel good the pictures are going to come out good and right you, you're able to do us a whole lot right right for sure so going from you know your growth and stuff how did you actually get into working with uh with megan the stallion so fun fact um i was a fan first okay i saw her uh her cypher go viral on twitter like i think end of 2016 or early 2017 okay and i kind of just like stayed a fan and i was like i was like just watching i was like keeping up with her like how like a fan would and um when i saw that like when i saw her cypher i was like man what the fuck i'm like she's from houston like i was like i'm instantly attracted to first like just good rappers in general yeah and um she was from the south i could hear it in her voice but like before i knew where she was from exactly i knew she was from the south and i'm like okay wait a minute and then i think at the bottom or maybe like in a comment i saw somewhere it said houston i was like oh bitch hold the fuck up like i now i fuck with you like yeah we, yeah yeah like you like you're my bitch so i went like a full year like just like legit like just supporting like you know from a fan like point of view and then um I hit her up on Snapchat. 
Okay. And um, unconventional. Right. <laughs> and I was like, hey, un- it's not a, it's not a Twitter, it's not an Insta. You're right. not sliding. That's unconventional. Okay. Right. So um, I hit might her- not always work. So don't take that. Right. <laughs> so I hit her up on Snap, and I was like, yo, like you know, I do photo and video, and um, I would love to like get some BTS of you. Like I'm, a, I'm just, a, I'm a huge fan, whatever. And um, she was like, hey, hit up my manager, who um, at the time was um, her late mother, uh, Holly, who um, I hit her up and uh, Miss Holly wrote back to me and she was like, hey, come out this uh, this Saturday and um, let's like give it a shot. And so I was super excited. And um, but I was working at the courthouse and I was like, Mm. I was a lead clerk. So I had to be there every Saturday. So I called in sick to work and um, I showed up to the studio and she recorded a session and um that ended up being the first episode of her vlog series hottie world and yeah it's just been magic ever since like the first year of me working with her like i was working full time at at the city of houston courthouse downtown and when she needed me i would like either call in sick or if i knew like a good amount ahead of time i would uh, schedule it yeah and since you know You've gotten the ball rolling with all that. Who have you worked with, you know, outside of Megan? And, you know, who are some of these other people you've you've done work with? Um, it's mainly been artists that she's either she's cool with and, like, she, like, brings around or that um, she has, like, a feature with. So I'll get photos of them separately, um, like, on set for a video or, like, you know, them together, like, BTS shit like that. Okay. But I'm very much, I'm, I'm very loyal to my bitch. <laughs> I like that. I mean, right. and obviously she's grown and and blew so up so much growth and like she's like just she's blown up to be the superstar that right. she is now she's l- like legit a fucking mega star oh I, yeah i love that for her Which, like there was moments where we were in the galleria trying to do vlogs and like they would be like um you guys have to like put that camera away and you know whatever and i'm like i'm sure like nowadays bitch like we would be in a whole like it'd be like a massive fucking crowd like oh yeah you know what i'm saying like it would be like a fucking hazard like <laughs> and what's crazy is that she didn't just um blow up to be you know like a like a mid-level or like right like a rapper you know some of those rappers that a lot of people know but they can kind of go out and or like they stay kind of like here no she my bitch she surpassed that to right. where she is basically a household name no yeah like, for sure like she definitely is up there like she's like top bitch yeah like, <laughs> like which is amazing that right. she came from fucking houston and she's right. she's from the city and she's always shown love to the city no, which absolutely. is which is crazy you know it, some people they 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 grow up and blow up and you know right. they, they tend to forget about where they came right, from but right, absolutely. she is very you know she's houston right for sure for sure so do you like doing um that style like bts stuff or or what what lane do you like doing the most of of videography or photography whatever it may be um i do i do enjoy bts because i think the reason why i enjoy it so much is because like like i said earlier hold on i'm getting all kinds of notifications let me do not disturb um but um growing up i watched a lot of mtv and one of the shows I watched a lot of was um, not making a band, although I did watch that. Um, making the video, um, and making the video is like just one giant BTS vlog. Like <laughs> it was just like just sounds better. like Houston's popping off, back right? There. You know, um, I definitely hear something going on outside. Um, but yeah, it was definitely um, a big inspo for me watching making the video because it was like you could just see the behind the scenes of the whole set of a music video, like from down to the, the glam session in the trailer to them building the set. And I'm like, man, I want to do this shit when I'm older. Like I really, really enjoyed like that process and seeing that process from a fan perspective. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. um, Seeing stuff like that to where people had these million dollar budgets, $500,000 budgets to do these crazy music videos. And now you're getting, the same kind of crazy video, but it's so much more compact and you're able right. to have a camera in your hand and you're not having to have a giant camera and these rigs right, and stuff. Right, so the, right. the evolution of a videography is crazy. Right. It is crazy. It's to, insane. I mean, you used to look at people that would do like Missy's video and stuff and psh, those are 
million right. dollar videos. Right. Big ass sets and big ass production teams. And it's like now like you need maybe like three people. Sometimes if I'm with just one and depending where you're at on the, and, and the camera you got, you could just really just get it with one person. I've made some magic out of um, one person and right. being in a garage or something. Right. And it's just it's so crazy how, how far it's gone because... I mean, now if somebody was to give somebody a million dollar budget for a video, they can do right. almost anything. Right, for sure, for sure. So what kind of advice would you give to somebody who is barely starting out? With photography? Photography, videography, whatever it may be, what advice would you would you give to them? I think definitely study the people who you're inspired by. Mm. Um, that really, um, that really, really helped me out um i was really into um vloggers like on youtube and i would kind of like try to like copy their their style of video editing but also like um i would see like artists who they would have like their camera people like their cameraman or their vid like videographer and i would try to like take what i liked and just kind of make my own visual so like i feel like that would be like my best advice to anyone like just start, starting out study who who you like you know yeah yeah okay i could see that yeah and uh us i mean being somewhere about the same age we grew up whenever youtube was kind of right getting the ball rolling right. so we saw all these different right vloggers like we and, saw like videos that like viral videos before we even had a term for a viral video like oh yeah there's a popular ass video that went crazy and you would have to find it on some random website or something right i think the first viral video i ever saw was by chris crocker which one um I, she well now chris is uh trans i don't know chris's new name but um she had the leave britney alone video i remember that one yeah but um i used to watch all of uh her videos okay yeah but yeah so we've seen the evolution of of the way people have done youtube and self-shot through right, all right. their stuff and been able to you know it goes from people just holding the camera everywhere they're going to right. you know people like uh casey neistat or something where they're setting up their shots and getting these right very cinematic right, right vlogs right. going and well, then, we went to uh, the gym the other day we went to 24 hour fitness and there was like a woman like working out like at a machine and she had like a whole tripod with her. And like, I've, I've seen that on TikTok, but I had not seen it in real life yet. In the wild. Yeah. I was like, oh shit. Okay. <laughs> that, yeah. I mean, Hey, everybody's, everybody's an influencer or doing their, what they want to do. Right. And I'm for it. I right. Yeah. I'm not mad at yeah, it. Yeah. I love, you know, whenever I see somebody filming something, I'm the type of person, if I see you filming, I'm coming to talk to you. Right. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. coming to see what you're doing, what you, you're filming. Right. I like to, I'm going to ask you for right. your Instagram. I'm going to follow right, you wherever right, I, right, wherever right, I can. Right. I should have asked her. If I see her again, I'm going to ask. Yeah. I'm, I'm always trying to tap in with anybody doing anything kind of creative. I'm, right. 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 I love that, that whole thing. Right. So getting into the music. Okay. You have a look. Okay. You have a look. I mean, obviously you have the. The head, head tattoos. Tats, yeah. <laughs> when did you start getting tattoos and stuff? What was your first one? My first tattoo, I don't know if you can even see it. It's, it was right here. It said, I promise. Okay. I don't know what the fuck I was promising. Or yeah, well, what, I promise. No idea. I, I was 18. I, like, it was just something I wanted to do. <coughs> um, and it's funny, too, because I actually designed that on Photoshop at 18. Okay. And I was so mad. I went to a tattoo shop on, off I-10. <laughs> I'm not gonna say which one. I'm not gonna bash them, but I think I know which one you're talking about. Um, <laughs> the artist. Uh, it's just what I wanted to give looked more like a like like a font from like a fashion magazine, mm -hmm. and what he did looked more like like a jailhouse tattoo, and I just wasn't feeling it. It just it no. Was, I definitely know which shop you're talking about. <laughs> And I was just like, uh, like this ain't me. But I was like, man, fuck it, whatever. Like, I got it. Well, you know, it was it was my first tattoo, so I'm yeah. like, I didn't know anything about cover ups or like, you know what I'm saying? So like, fuck it. Um, I got it covered up maybe like four years ago. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I fucking love tattoos to be honest. Like, um, 
especially like the ones on my head i was so scared to get all of them um but like my fucking my hair was like thinning i was like because coochie in this picture has hair i had i I, yeah i had had hair hair. there i used to have long blonde hair actually i yeah yeah so um my hair was like thinning and i was like i could go to like overseas and get like a hair transplant but i was like or i could be like a fucking badass and just shave my head so you were one of those people that try to hold on to it i know some people who are oh no i tried to hold on to it they're holding on to that hair but it wasn't like to the point you know like how like old men like they swoop their hair it's like fucking two strand like bitch shave that shit off like like homer simpson right like just shave it like just come on like but it was never like the bald right it was never like that i was getting like clean ass like fades and shit still like it still looked like when it was cut it looked good but when it was growing out it was like all right now like we might have to do something about that but um i was like man fuck it i was like on the road more a lot and i didn't have time to just go get a haircut whenever i wanted all the time so it was it was looking crazy so i was like i need to just invest in clippers cut it off and go get tatted and that's what i did which one was the first one on the head one of the ones on the side, I think. Is this, this is a skull right here. Or what yeah, is this? That's so a skull. it was this one then. Okay, the, it's a dragon. Yes. Okay. That, that was the first one. Which is your favorite tattoo? The dragon. The dragon. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then the head was was kind of. Did you have like an image or in mind that you wanted to go for? You or? know, randomly I saw like dudes on Instagram who were bald. And they had head tats. And I was like, this shit looks fucking sick. Like, it does. I'm waiting for my hair to fall out so I can have right. a reason to do it. Please do. Like, you, you'll feel like a complete fucking badass. Like, I want beard and head tats. It's kind of... I want to... Well, I can't grow a beard. But I would like a beard. But I, like... I kind of use my head tats sometimes as a, like, defense mechanism. Like, sometimes, like, I feel like um, if people aren't taking me serious... Like, if I have a hat on or something, or, like, I feel like if people are, like, trying to play me, or if I feel, like, a weird vibe from someone, and, like, like if I have a hat on or, like, a hoodie, I'll, like, casually just, like, you know, like, take it off, or like, scratch, and then, like, I feel like it kind of intimidates them in a way. It does. Well, <laughs> society has has made it to where head tats and, like, face tats are, are intimidating. Right. They look, they look tough. Right. And then tough people have fucking it, it takes pain to go through. Right. no absolutely so but in the same in the same aspect Especially this one right here that oh one look- my god that shit hurts so bad but in the same aspect like if i'm like walking if i'm like in an elevator like with a woman or something i feel like i try to like cover up more so i don't look like scary or something yeah or i try to like just really really be fucking super gay like i i try to up up the gayness they're like he's fine right because you know men can be creeps like no shade but i you know i'm saying like i want to like make sure like all like the ladies feel protected like when i'm like like i said being feeling safe even either if it's in an elevator or right like you know i'm saying like i'd be like oh hey girl you know whatever and then you know but i mean even the 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 forehead you have your eye done Mm -hmm. what was that like like that's a that's a step so the head you can cover up right the face so i don't i must have been going through something to be honest i was going through a a really not bad breakup but i was going through a breakup when i got most of these tattoos so it was like just really therapeutic to just like get all of it done um the face tat i don't know what the fuck i was going through i just know what does it say amor eterno okay um but i i just really i don't know i just I, i'm an artist at the at the end of the day you know what i'm saying so like i want to express my creativity in, yeah. in every way possible because you have very visible you have the head the face you yeah. have the hands Are i'm you, an expressive person i want to be covered up like probably like 80 percent. which one hurt the worst back of the head back of the head what does it's medusa Ooh. okay yeah, that shit hurt i almost tapped out and probably second was uh right here my neck i've heard that this is a very that shit hurt like right on the adam's apple mm-hmm. area i've heard that's really bad it hurts so bad i don't have very many i'm working on it but <laughs> i want to is that the pac-man goes this yeah that's what everybody thinks oh. see bad artist <laughs> what it's, is it it's a uh, hannibal lecter's mask oh shit my next guest was like a dreamcast controller that's what everybody <laughs> thinks they think it's like a cat 
or a I controller. Okay. But no, it's Hannibal Lecter's mask because I have Jason on this side. Oh, my boyfriend is a horror fanatic. That's why he's wearing that shirt. Over there. Yes, I, I forgot to tell you earlier. I like that shirt. <laughs> so, but tattoos in general, I mean, they're not easy to get and they, they're painful. So, uh, right. where, where do you plan on going next? Like With tattoos? Yeah. I have like a whole, like the way that you have all them notes right there. I have a note just like that, but it's all tats. Okay. I just any more face? Uh, maybe. Maybe like a little one right here. No, or? I forget. See, I forget where the fuck they're at. I have something either here. I think is it here or is it on this side? You have a rose on that side. Okay, so I want to get something on like right here. Okay. Um, I don't know what yet. It could be words. I don't know, but I just want like something like to like kind of like help define this and mm. just make it feel more full. I feel like this is here. It feels empty over here to me um but yeah i'm trying to be covered okay well this whole conversation started by getting into the music because you have like a look of of like an artist okay you have like the artist look you look at some well you look at somebody with tattoos on their head and their face and you gotta wonder what do they do right and then usually there's some kind of artist some kind of tattoo artist or something so yeah you have that artist look i've actually been told that at, at the gym before i'll be like be working out and people are like what do you do yeah i'm like why like oh well you look like someone yeah I'm like oh thank you <laughs> I mean people there's a look there's, right 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 so how did you actually get into the music and stuff and didn't the tattoos actually come after the music or before or? kind of around the, they kind of came together to be honest and it wasn't like oh I'm I want to do music so I need tats it wasn't never like I had tats before I, yeah. I was doing music um just not head tats um but I th- so the way that music for me came about was um when i was working there was a point in time where i was working at the courthouse downtown and uh, for a year i lived in conroe so that was probably like a 45 50 minute commute so i would get off work at 10 30 at night and i had a good damn near hour to drive down 45 north damn. to myself and just fucking freestyle on snapchat (laughs) and that's what i used to do like i would like like i would play i guess like late at night i don't know if they still do i really don't play the radio anymore but back then at nighttime they would um play like old school houston shit on the radio and so i would like just crank the radio up open up my snapchat camera and i would just start freestyling and it would be funny shit like kind of stupid shit but like if, if you really listen it's shit that's like okay hold up wait a minute like it will be like kind of hard You're saying something okay right right and then i have people like that would tell me like bitch like go hop in the studio like you need to like put that to work and i was like eh, okay whatever so like i ended up fucking around at a friend's studio um well homemade like fake ass bedroom studio hey everybody's and, everybody's right, got yeah. right but I, I don't even think I can't okay let me let me rewind it wasn't even a studio it was just a fucking mic and a macbook (laughs) but she uh she played i think it was we played the instrumental to man okay and i freestyled over it and i doubt you even found this if because i have it private everywhere because i I didn't i didn't i didn't find that (laughs) maybe i'll send it maybe i won't but um yeah that was like 20 i think that was 2018 and um i kind of i was chilling for a minute i didn't like drop anything i would still like do like little stupid shit here and there like shit that was kind of like it didn't go anywhere like it was maybe like on a soundcloud or i would Mm -hmm. come back on instagram stories and you know start freestyling or something but it was like nothing like too too serious and then um right at the beginning of um my breakup i think i just was like looking looking for like an outlet to like express myself and um and just express like what i was going through like with that and so i started to really take music like a lot more serious and then like when i had the idea for my project tugging it was because i was going through a lot like at once i was getting really really busy with work like traveling and stuff while dealing with the breakup while trying to like find i guess like new love and find myself um and then also maintain my friendships and family relationships yeah. while being on the road. And so it's all these things at once. I felt like I was being tugged like in every direction, like hence the name tugging. Yeah. Um, 
and yeah, that's kind of like how I just started doing lot, music. Whenever um, people are starting to make music and stuff, they I don't think people realize like the amount of pressure that that right. you know has on somebody, especially right. whenever you're trying to withhold you know family relationships and friends and jobs right. and you're you're like you're getting pulled in all these different directions and you're you're trying to do something that you you know you want to set your mind to right so I, I don't think a lot of people actually realize like how stressful that is yeah it's super fucking stressful it is and then how would you like describe your music or how how um, how would emilio Cucci describe his music i feel like my music is fun I like I like fun music. I don't give a fuck if I'm like on some more singy shit, more like rap shit. Like it's fun. You're probably gonna chuckle, like or giggle, like listening to what I'm saying. I like to talk shit, like I said earlier. Um, but it's also like my I, like I know like I'm like a, I'm a very humble person, but like I can fucking spit. Like I'm gonna just say it. Like I I. I'm a good writer. Like I okay. can write and I'm my shit is bar heavy, but you gotta really like listen. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta like pay attention. Like you gotta be a smart individual. And um I like to just make music that makes people feel good, as cliche as that sounds. Yeah. And I mean getting into rap as a gay person, it's not the easiest lane to get into right. because uh-huh. rap I mean, historically has been pretty homophobic at homophobic times. Right. you know mi- misogynistic and right, a lot right, of people right. you know they're not open to that right how is that kind of trying to get into to the rap lane into the the rap scene and stuff right so i mean i ha- i really you know i guess luckily i haven't really experienced anything um too crazy um online a little bit here and there i might have like a, a bad comment but like i'm i don't give a fuck about that um but i had a show at avant um, maybe like a month or two ago and um although avant is in montrose technically like it wasn't like it's not advertised as a gay club it's like yeah you know so um as i wouldn't consider it i mean it's open to everyone but it's not really yeah. you know a gay spot but um it was like a lot of like underground and an upcoming artists like rappers and like it was like a house party kind of vibe in there and you know, when I when I got done performing, like people really was like receptive to like what the fuck I had to say. And I had a lot of people that night, like straight dudes come up to me and was like, yo, like you hard. Like, do you have management? Like I was getting asked all kinds of shit that I like, I think I, that has a lot to do with the openness of Houston. Right. Right. Which which I think is awesome. But yeah, that's that's Yeah, I was I was kind of shook like a little bit because like normally like prior to that, I had only ever performed at like gay spots okay so that like that was my first like non-gay spot to really like talk my shit at and it went really fucking well i'm i'm sure that's a a confidence booster oh it definitely was and helped you right perform south by southwest you know yeah how was that what was that like that whole experience going out there um and it was crazy it it felt you know i'm saying like it was reminiscent of like my early days working with meg um Mm. like when it would be just like me her her mom and like her her management um it was like really reminiscent of that because i was like damn like it was like just me and and my boyfriend just like in the car like we just drove up to austin and um i got like it was crazy because i got the hotel for free like just they all i had to do was post about it so I was like, okay, I got some clout to my name. <laughs> like, okay. Shout out to Lofts. Or, right, the, or, or, to, to, to the A-Loft, uh, yeah. Southwest and Austin. Shout out to y'all. Um, it was just a really cool experience overall. Like, it really, it felt really confirming. Because even, like, even that, like, the set that I was on, like, like, the lineup, like, I closed that out. So I was like, okay, like, this might be going somewhere, like, for real, for real. Okay. I was kind of, like, shook. And getting on stage, um, especially performing and, and getting on stage of being, you know, a rapper is not the easiest thing. In uh-uh. front of being in front of a crowd is 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 hard. How did you right. kind of get, you know, that I guess confidence or get that, you know, to actually be in front of a crowd and because and, so a lot of artists, um, I'll I'll say 
they might have good music right but not a lot of them are great performers right or have like stage presence stage presence like is that. a big right. thing how did you get that stage presence and stuff um honestly i feel like doing like youtube videos back in the day really helped me be able to like get comfortable talking to like strangers or like put myself out there even if it wasn't like in person yeah um and i don't know like like i said like i'm just a really open person i like to talk shit i like to make people feel good whether that's through a screen or just face to face so yeah, yeah. bitch give me a mic and let's let me just talk my shit and hype people up okay and uh as far as the music and stuff what 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 are some dream collabs that that, that you're hoping for <laughs> one of these days like dream collabs I don't even, you know, I've thought about this and then I like, I'll like turn my brain off whenever I think about that because I'm like, it feels like so, like, so far fetched that I'm like, man, like that shit would never even. You never know. I know you never know. I know you, you have to speak things into existence and, you know, really like, you know, do all that manifestation and stuff. But I mean, I would love to work with like, like it sounds even like crazy to even say these names but like top three like without a doubt and not even like a feature but like just work with in some capacity okay okay. whether it's photography or music wise or just something um but like top three would be um beyonce rihanna nikki okay that's like top fucking three um gaga uh doja cat that would be fire. That will be really, really fire. Um, and then, I don't know, like, someone from Houston. My favorite Houston rapper is Zero. Okay. So I would love to do something with Zero. I think that would be really, Shout really fire. Shout out to Ro. I, you I, know. I've uh, met him on a couple occasions, and he's uh, he's been a nice guy. Really? Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I, he's been a nice guy. I filmed for him um, at a Scout Bar. I filmed uh, oh, for sure, him okay. at Scout Bar, so I mean he seems cool as fuck. Yeah, he was a nice guy. Yeah, I mean, he, and he and I just had this conversation with my boyfriend yesterday. I forget what, baby, what song were you playing in the car? Okay, so the song was called "Use a Bitch." I had never heard it, and um, I was kind of just like zoned out and like like listening to it, his voice and. I'm like, man, like he has like, I feel like he's so slept on. I feel like he's not as big as he should be. Yeah. I, I feel like we appreciate him in Houston, but I feel like outside of Houston, I feel like he's still not as big as he really should fucking be. Like he's so smart and intelligent with the way that he raps and he be singing. I'm like, all right. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like you do it all. Hey, yeah, definitely. Hey, that would be dope. Milio that would be. And Zero. You know. <laughs> hey. Shout out to Chef Machete, my homie, um, for, for introducing me in, in row love that so um the album tugging how did you come out with the uh the the album cover and you know because it, it takes a good i i'm a believer and not a lot of people believe it but a good album cover is very important now. right because now some people don't even be putting an effort into to the the and you, artwork or nothing i used to love the pamphlets and stuff that came right, into CDs. Right. So I think it all comes hand in hand. Right. No, I'm so fucking particular. Like I've worked with artists and um and even just not even people who I've worked with, but just like I'll see I always got my my ear and my eyes to the streets. I'm always even when someone who I might not know, I'm I probably heard of you or checked you out once or twice. Like and one thing, like if if it's something that I do where it's like photography or graphic design I'm very, very critical about it. So I'm like, man, what the fuck? Like, a lot of this shit is whack. Like, and just not even to be a fucking dick about it. But, like, this is corny. It's ugly. Like, it's not aesthetically pleasing. Like, like creative. Right. Like, why would you put this shit out? Like, it's not. This is a no. And um, when it came to tugging, um, I got with this photographer who um, he's, he's in L.A. Um, his name is Marcelo. He's, like, a really popular uh photographer in the, in the industry so shout out to marcelo because he's, he's actually also from uh texas okay so we love that um but he's fucking amazing like he can make nothing like just something out of like legit nothing he's super good with like 3d 
um type shit and like create like a whole world out of like legit nothing um but the concept kind of came about because like like i said um i was being tugged at in every direction so i wanted to like convey that with the image um the dress i honestly don't even know why the fuck i had on a fucking that's what i was wondering i was wondering (laughs) and it was uh it has no significance it was like a prom dress or something right yeah i don't know what the fuck um i thought there was some kind of story behind that. nah it wasn't shit behind it and like i just i don't know i was in la and i was walking uh downtown and they have like all these like shops and stuff where you could buy like different things and um i saw like this store that had like it was like a quinceanera dress type store and i was like let me look in here and i saw that one and i was like man fuck it like i'm gonna just throw this shit on and whatever and even my tia like like one of my tias she was like oh what does the dress mean or like (laughs) i'm like i don't know like there's (laughs) no it don't mean shit like i don't fucking know but yeah (laughs) well hey i thought there was a story behind that there's (laughs) i should have said something yeah, so the 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 prom dress didn't have any kind of <laughs> significance. I I mean, uh, it looks good, right? It, it looks good, and it it, it definitely, catches your eye. You know, no, what that's saying? exactly. Whenever I was going through the Houston top ten albums of the year, right? That's what caught my eye. Right. Oh, that's how you found me. Yep. Oh, period. <laughs> that is exactly how I, I found you. Okay, I love that. So. How did that, I mean, how is that? Like, how does that feel to be named on that list? Fucking crazy. Like I said, like, every time, like, some shit, like, pops off for me, like, in the music world, and, um, like, and it's, like, good, like, they're, like, praising me, I'm, like... It still doesn't feel real. Right, because I'm just, like, I'm doing this, and, like, I've only barely started to, like, take it serious, like, maybe this past year. Yeah um i mean i put the music out last year but i was working so much i didn't really have time to like promote and or now like, you're you're doing more videos right right these past right. few months you've yeah. been doing more videos yeah. and stuff so so and we just shot another one for this song that i'm featured on um with isaac Niaz and um nate drop uh called don't trust me i think that's supposed to come out soon um be on the lookout right i have an, another video coming out soon that my friend from la shot she came out here and shot it's called um unannounced that okay. one's coming out soon um but yeah i definitely um i was like man fuck it like because i was like kind of like on the road and shit and i'll be like man i feel like my music's like not really like taking off or i would have people i think what got me to take it more serious was i had people they would write me and be like are you still doing music and i did not like how that i didn't mm -mm. it made me feel something i can't even describe i was like bitch like yes i just i haven't put anything out but the thing is too i feel like it was kind of like a little bit of self-sabotage because I put out tugging and then I would find beats that I liked and I wanted to like make new shit. And I was like, but I want to wait until I got all the songs ready to release on a brand new project. And I was like, man, fuck that. Like, I'm just going to start dropping shit like as I go. Yeah. And when I got time to really solidify a bunch of shit that I like, then I'll just drop it on a project. But I can't just be silent because then you get forgotten about. Yeah. And, um, as far as being somebody who doesn't make music, um, looking in from the outside, uh, I think we're in a in a singles era. Right. I mean, a lot of people are putting out projects, but people are only listening to the singles that they, they right, like on the right, projects. Right, right, right. So I think I've always told everybody that I think singles are the way to go. Yeah. Because you're able to drop a single, let it be fire, promote that single, and just run those numbers up right Absolutely. and then just keep doing it instead of putting out a project that maybe people will listen to one or two songs off right, of it or right, right you know people are very um selective with what they listen to right for sure so i, agree. I, I think singles is the way to go and i think right. especially with with somebody who's starting out doing music and somebody who's uh still you know trying to get their their name out there and stuff right. and i think that's uh that's the way to go so right singles. but i feel like too if you do have a project like and you're barely coming out like i wouldn't make that shit more than eight songs yeah <laughs> like definitely yeah. definitely no more than 10 because like we're getting to know you still like yes. i don't want to be like force fed too much i want to i want to find like even with me like when i push it out like i feel like for my next project i want to just get like the best of the best five 
tracks, maybe six, just to throw a little variety. Yeah. But like just like a, a handful so you could really focus on like the production. Cause that was really important to me too. I didn't want to go to any old person to like engineer, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like to to get my shit. Like I wanted to like make sure my sound was right first and foremost before anything. Like obviously like the writing and like what I say has to you know sound right and be like that's important too but like it don't matter if you know what i say if you know the songs on fucking apple music sounding like shit you know what i'm saying like yeah. i want it to sonically like just be of good quality yeah and that's in, that's important but i guess um the singles thing i can't really harp on that because i did find you because of your project right and i people, I fa- people fuck with talking though like low yeah, key. i'd be like I, okay like and uh, I'm I found you because of your project, and then I started looking into who you were. Right. I listened to the music. I went to the YouTube channel. I went to the the Instagram, okay. and I started just digging into who you were. And I I just thought you were such an interesting person. Okay. I and you had you you seem like you've had just an interesting ride, and you know you've um you just you know yeah you've done a lot, and I I've just found it very interesting going back and and trying to understand right, who right. emilio Cucci is right right yeah so <laughs> i can't the, the project definitely is, is great i mean thank you it, it's everybody needs to check it out hey it was yes. on houston's top albums of the year yes shout out joey guerra from the houston chronicle for including me on that that was fire so i mean what are your your plans going forward with music like um i definitely want to get booked for like a festival of some sort okay like south by southwest you know like that was like a humongous deal especially being from texas but like next time i either want to get booked for something like like i want to get like something like official official type shit like put me on a motherfucking lineup at south by southwest you know yeah. what i'm saying like yeah. i'm so appreciative of of being included in that conversation anyways and being in Austin that week while South by was going on. But, um, like I want to be a part of like rolling loud or like just something like even like on a baby minor spectrum, like just being able to just like be a part of that would be fucking like cool as fuck. Okay. And what, what plans do you have? Like, um, as far as the music, like, do you plan on, sharing more about who you are or diversifying you know like you said you like to to joke around with some of the music and have fun with it but right are you gonna have you know the 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 serious side of of milio cucci or so i i feel like that's why um off camera i was talking to you about um like doing a cypher yeah I really You want to show people that you, you got bars. Right. Like I'm not just some little gay boy out here like just doing this for fun. Like I I could stand up to old boy, you know, who's been doing this for a minute. I could, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like I could I could do this. I know I can do this and I could probably do it better than you. <laughs> like, I would I I want to to hear that side of your your music. I want yeah. to to hear the evolution. I want to see you on all on all aspects of the right. music. And uh hey, Emilio Cipher yeah that would be <laughs> emilio cypher uh it's emilio coochie coo- on it's, a cypher. It's, it's the coochie cypher hey that would be cool right Hey, we might have to, to, to figure something we out we might have to but that would be hard seeing that side of you and um letting everybody else see that that side of you would definitely i think uh would be good right i mean because like there's a lot of talent in houston yes um for sure for sure um but you know, I just got to pop my shit real quick on on everyone out here. And that, <laughs> it's no shade. You know what I'm saying? It's friendly competition. Yeah. But, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I got to talk my shit. And I've, I've noticed that a lot of the, the artists in Houston, um, that's what, you know, they, they pay attention to is is locally. What are you doing? If you're if you can compete like bar right. for bar with people. Yeah. Right. And the thing is, too, like, I feel like, again, this is no shade. I'm just keeping it up. 100 yeah i feel like a lot of people right now kind of sound the same oh yeah they do they have the same sound they have like the beats sound the same the flow sounds the same and that's, that's no shade that's that's it's just facts yeah and you know what i'm saying i i feel like i bring something different to the table that's one thing that gravitated me towards you was right. listen i like something that catches your ear because i'm i get sent music 
every day. Right. I'm yeah. I'm sure. I get people sending me their music every day, and then I'm somebody who actually takes the time to listen to it. Love that. I will listen to everybody's music who sends me stuff, but a lot of it does sound the same. Right. And, and then there's always um, they'll they'll say, "Oh, I'm I'm bringing something different to the table." No, you're not. No. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds the same as the the last person who sent me something right so whenever i hear something different i'm like whoa okay right. like you take a minute to ing- ingest yes. it and digest it and really think about it so definitely i think you are bringing something different to the table and thank you hey i'm, I'm fucking with it right and everybody needs that. to go out and check it out exactly <laughs> so where can everybody find you at and where can everybody check you out and what do you want them to listen to off of you other than just the project what singles can they like go specifically in? to get like a vibe of me yes okay so y'all can check me out everywhere instagram twitter spotify apple title just everything um at emilio coochie um if i had to say i'm gonna give y'all three songs to really get the gist of coochie okay um definitely i want cash big shit talking energy um Toxic freestyle, short and sweet to the point, and um, I feel like a uh, quiet storm freestyle. I just dropped that recently. Um, I feel like that's kind of more like what you said, like more serious. Yeah, I feel like it's me more kind of like just talking shit, but not in a like playful way. I'm really like on some serious shit. Okay, I've noticed some of your music has um, it has like a a louisiana bounce kind of oh. sound to it okay i mean definitely i mean in high school okay well in junior high um like during like hurricane katrina and stuff you know obviously houston had a lot of like new orleans transplants like people, yeah people yeah came to evacuate from you know katrina and so in junior high and high school like i became friends with a few girls you know who were from new orleans so um I guess maybe like there would be some influence there, but even like just my friends in general, like we would play like New Orleans Bounce often. Okay. Just in a car in high school, like just pulling up to the McDonald's down the street <laughs> yeah. on Sheldon Road and like just having like little twerk sessions or like re- I would record them. Like, you know what I'm saying? I had a camera back then too. I would like record them like playing like bouncing, biggity, bouncing, biggity, bouncing, biggity, bouncing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we would like just be real cute and ratchet in a parking lot always. <laughs> Yeah, but that that's kind of what I I get from your music. Yeah. I and I, I think it's good. Thank you. Hey, Emilio Cucci, check them out everywhere. Yup. Apple Music, all the the Spotify's everywhere, YouTube, Instagram, Emilio Cucci. Motherfucking everywhere. Hey, we out here. We Slum out. sessions. Check out the check out everything. Yes. Cuz you ain't going to be disappointed. Go back at and, all. Yes. That's me. Bye y'all. Hey, we <laughs> out here. Stay slum. Roll it, roll it up, roll it up, let it shop. Roll it up, roll it up, let it up, roll 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 it